I don't care what country you're from or what football team you support, if you like football, even just the smallest bit, then today's story is one that you have to hear about. A university team who have played in Europe and who currently play in the top division of their domestic league system. It's an unreal story. We'll be investigating the stadium in the area in just a little bit. I was up until about one in the morning last night getting my Dublin Derby vlog up. So firstly, we need to go and grab a coffee. We can just Great, <laughs> perfect, yeah, it is the weekend, yeah, get them on there. Perfect, mate, thank you very much. Shout out to Fiji Coffee and Chocolate here. Really good cappuccino. Um, when I planned this island trip, I didn't realise that I'd be coming back as well. It's a bit complicated. I flew out for the Dublin Derby, I just booked a flight for the Dublin Derby on the Friday and then to fly back on the Saturday. But I'm flying back Saturday night. It's Saturday morning right now, so I've got all day to film a video. I am coming back mid next week. I'm coming back to Belfast, of course, Northern Ireland, but I will be taking my car across. So I'll be going from Northern Ireland to Ireland a little bit and just kind of crossing between the two. Um, to film a load of content, match day vlogs and other things. But like I say, this sort of left me with a video to film today. And when I was looking at the area I was staying in, I was like, so what stadiums are near me? And I love doing like weird and wonderful football stories. So just recently I've done like the world's worst football team, Fort William, or Uruguay didn't win the World Cup, West Auckland did, or I've done the stadium that destroyed a football club, Darlington. And today is an incredibly intriguing football story for me. The university team who is made up of students and scholars and people who yeah, want scholarships at the University College Dublin, a team made up completely of people like that who have competed in Europe, who are in the top tier of Irish football. And where I am right now um, is a place called Merion area. And I've been staying just south of here um, from where I am now with this coffee. Um, but I'm right opposite UCD, University College Dublin, the whole sort of campus area. And on that campus area is the football club. Now, I will obviously be telling you about the club. We'll be going down to the stadium in a bit. I'll be telling you about their European exploits and I'll also be telling you about how you become a player for um, UCD. But just look at the Irish Premier Division. Look, they are in the top tier, they're bottom. Um, but they have won a number of major trophies. Obviously, they've had to get promoted to be here. Um, so they are a good side with a really good history. Look, Shamrock Rose, I saw them play yesterday. Dundalk are obviously a good side. Derry are a good side. Uh, Sligo, I'm going to be going and staying in Sligo a little bit later on. Um, I think early July I'll be there. Um, we've got Bohemians who we saw, and or Bohemian who we saw, and look, UCD right at the bottom of the league. But they are in the top tier. But they're a university team, so. Can you really judge them against the sort of so-called bigger teams in the Irish Premier League or Premier Division? Here we go. It looks like we are on campus right now, somewhere I've never been, his university. And look, there is UCD Dublin. I think that is the football badge. Does the football team use the same emblem as the university in general then? I guess it must do. If that's on there saying welcome, then I suppose it does. Um, look what you can do here, look. There's a bicycle shop. There is a chemistry and biology sort of lab, I guess. Um, let's see if we can find where the stadium would be on here. Uh, UCD Sports Centre, maybe that is it. Um, I know for a fact there's a lot of different... Oh, there you go, Leinster Rugby. There's a lot of different sporting things in and around here. I think there's a National Hockey Stadium, as well as obviously rugby stuff. I'm sure there's stuff for hurling and for Gaelic football as well. Um, but there is a stadium specific to UCD that they use here for home games, which we're going to have to go and find. Well, actually, I think I found it. I think it's called UCD Bowl, which means we're looking for number nine on here. Um, where is number nine? Do any of you see it? Oh, it's in grid C4. So C4, nine. There it is. That's where we've got to get to. And we're just there, so it must be close.
check it out, we've made it inside the home of UCD, the team that are currently bottom of the Irish Premier Division. You may be able to hear a bit of sport going on behind me. This whole university campus ground here has loads of different stadiums and um, little sports centres and stuff. So there's like some hockey going on um, just through there. But yeah, here we go now. Look, UCD, University College Dublin. I wonder what the support base is like. Do they get people from sort of this local area supporting the club or is other supporters mainly just the students who are here for a couple of years talking about being here for a couple of years the majority of their players will only play for the club for three or four years at a time apparently the club are entitled to sign players who don't study i believe the last season they did that was 2019 they had a young everton player here on loan that's what i've been told by one of the fans shout out to the ucd afc fan page on instagram for letting me know all this information but it's very rare apparently that they would um sort of play players who aren't scholars here at the university it's a model that the management that the management team sticks to because they're able to sort of plan games and training i suppose around the schedule of the students and if they're all students then their schedule should roughly align yeah most players apparently stick around for three or four years while they're sort of studying here at the uni players will sometimes extend on a little bit further however yeah that's usually just say into the summer um when maybe their course is finished but they're still sort of finishing off the season or whatever i think Aberdeen up there, there's a Liverpool pennant, Molde, that's from uh, Norway in the Youth League. Looks like Finland played Iceland here and then Dundee United as well. In the close season, Hamilton. before the season starts, uh, usually, when does the season start? In England. In England, usually July, August. Yeah, but before that, there are friendly yeah. matches here uh -huh. and some of these teams come over and yes. play. Uh, our clubs. Yeah, because there's Hamilton up there. Hamilton would have been over there, yeah. Warm up games, like you say. Dundee United and Swindon as well. Wow, that was brilliant. A couple of ladies here who are stewarding a hockey tournament going in the, on in there right now. It's an international hockey tournament happening in there currently. Um, as a warm up for the World Cup, I think they were saying. Um, there's loads of stuff going on around here. There's even more like sports just happening around here. Um, but what I was going to say is, yeah, they were showing me inside and some of the pennants on the wall. I'll overlay some. Slovan Bratislava, a team that I've seen play in Slovakia. They are Slovakia's most successful team. Um, it was amazing to see like the pennants in there of that. So they actually played Slovan Bratislava in the Europa League second qualifying round in 2015-16. I'll also overlay some, um, some other um pennants and stuff that were on the walls in there i'm not sure how much of like the actual conversations are of court um but just look at something like the european pedigree I saw the molder um pennant in there as well from when they played in the europa youth league in 2017-18 but probably one of their greatest moments would have been beating a team from luxembourg f91 dudelange i hope i'm saying that right dudelange do the launch probably isn't it if it's uh, from Luxembourg um, but they beat them in the first qualifying round of the Europa League in 2015-16 to set up a tie against Slovan Bratislava which they lost 6-1 on aggregate they also played in everyone's favorite UEFA competition the, uh, the Intertoto Cup in 2000 but probably their greatest ever achievement was in 1985 they won the um, the Irish Cup, like the FA Cup, the FAI Cup. Yeah, they won the Irish Cup and they um, got obviously to the um, Cup Winners' Cup where they played Everton in the first round. And they drew nil-nil at home against a team that were later um, dubbed the greatest team in the world for that year. That was when um, Everton were sort of at their height in the mid 80s. They had players like Graham Sharp and um, other absolute legends of the club around at that time. Um, obviously won the cup and then went on to play in the Cup Winners' Cup. And yeah, UCD actually got a draw against them in the time where they were voted the best team in the world. So shout out to UCD, um, a team completely made up of, you know, scholars, university guys who went out and got a draw against the greatest team in the world that year. Now, this is an absolute footy adventures first. We are in and around all the hurling guys right now. Hurling is such a crazy sport. They have these, I'm sorry if I butcher some of the terminology, sticks, would they call them sticks? A hurling stick, I'm not sure. Um, they have these things and they whack them. You have to wear a, a helmet, I think, but from what the ladies were just telling me inside, I don't think they wear like shin pads or leg guards or anything like that so you get smashed with the ball, which I think is quite hard. But yeah, the sport scene in Ireland is absolutely, it's really diverse. 
loads of cool unique sports so despite there being St Patrick, Shelbourne, Shamrock Rovers, Bohemian as well as other football teams, soccer teams within Dublin and the fact that you know there's the GAA there's the hurling, there's rugby. UCD AFC, the football club of this university, have a huge task on their hands, I guess, in attracting fans and attention. Again, my question to you guys, what is the fan base like? I've read online it's not massive. Would it be mainly made up of uni students? When they leave the uni, do they ever come back and support the team again? I suppose the team changes quite often, so um, yeah, maybe it's more like you'll just support them for a number of years while you're here, kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, would there be sort of local supporters of the club. It's amazing the success they've had down the years. I've already mentioned their cup win and their European exploits. But they've also won the Irish First Division three times. That is the equivalent of the championship down in England or in Scotland. The most recent one was in 2018. It's just funny to be sort of strolling around a university campus right now, making a football video about a team who have won so much and have a, currently in the top tier of their domestic league system. I absolutely love that. I love these strange stories um, in football where you know, university teams shouldn't really be playing Slovan Bratislava and they shouldn't be beating professional teams from Luxembourg whose only job is to play football matches. The only job of UCD's players isn't just to play matches, it's also to obviously study here at the university. So I find these stories intriguing and uh, yeah, if you have any more suggestions of ones similar to this you'd like me to cover around the UK, weird football stories, I've done um, places like Berwick where they're technically in England but they play in Scotland's league system. Place, things like that, I love these kinds of videos um, where I can explore the weird and wonderful topics of football, the fairy tale of football as I've so often called it where you can have such humble roots and things like this club here playing against the best team in the world of the 80s or playing against Slovan Bratislava. I absolutely love it. Please do consider subscribing. I make football content all around the world. I've been to loads of different countries, loads of different continents pre-COVID of course, but things are opening up. I live in Scotland, I'm from England, but I'm in Ireland right now. Um, so get your suggestions in the comment section of where you maybe want me to go next or want me to cover, or if you support a team, or specifically if you support a team in Ireland, the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland, drop a comment below because I'm gonna be spending the next couple of weeks here. I'm flying back to Scotland tonight, getting my car in a couple of days and driving back over. So yeah, got loads and loads planned. Please do remember to hit that like button as well. I'll leave some videos on screen. If you could click on one to carry on watching, that would really, really help me out. That shows the YouTube algorithm that I have a channel that people like the look of. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.